This week's topic is Anaplan scenario planning. So this is basically how Anaplan scenario planning capabilities separate them from the competition. First, a quick introduction of our Axolytics team. I'm Chris Laudit, and with me here today are our supply chain subject matter experts, Matt Russell, Michael LaHood, and Rod Vialta. Last week, we talked about how we can utilize statistical forecasts that we create with mathematically based algorithms as the starting point of a comprehensive consensus process that focuses on interconnected planning and collaboration. This week, we want to zero in on another great feature and strength of Anaplan Solutions, which is the ability to do live scenario planning. So let's jump in. Okay, the technology that Anaplan utilizes allows for real-time scenario creation and interaction. This is one of Anaplan's great strengths. Using Anaplan, it is easy to set up advanced supply chain planning scenarios. This enables organizations to evaluate different potential outcomes and their impact on the business based on varying assumptions and conditions. Scenario planning in Anaplan allows users to create multiple scenarios and compare them side by side to make informed decisions and develop robust strategic plans. While other software solutions require scenarios to be set up and processed before seeing results, Anaplan allows you to view scenario results instantaneously. And here's how it works. To begin scenario planning in Anaplan, users start by integrating relevant data from various sources, such as financial systems, sales data, supply chain information, and more. Anaplan's flexible modeling capabilities allow organizations to build the unified and dynamic planning model that reflects their business structure and operational processes. After setting up the base model, users can create multiple scenarios representing different business situations or potential outcomes. Each scenario can be based on different assumptions, market conditions, or strategic initiatives. Uh, for example, scenarios can include best case, worst case, and moderate case scenarios, or explore the impact of different market trends or economic conditions. Within each scenario, users can modify specific assumptions, drivers, and variables to see how those changes influence the overall results. This might include adjusting factors such as sales growth rates, pricing strategies, production costs, and more. By doing so, businesses can gain insights into how different decisions might affect their financial performance and operational outcomes. Once the various scenarios are created and customized, Anaplan allows users to compare them in real time. This side-by-side -side comparison provides a comprehensive view of how each scenario affects different aspects of the business, such as revenue, expenses, profits, cash flow, and other KPIs that are relative to your business. Scenario planning in Anaplan is not restricted to individual users. Uh, teams and stakeholders can collaborate and share their insights, which facilitates data-driven decision-making across the organization. The platform promotes a more integrated approach to planning, where finance, sales, operations, and other departments can align their strategies based on the results of scenario analysis. As conditions change in the real world, businesses can easily update their scenarios in Anaplan to reflect new data or evolving market conditions. This ensures that the planning process remains agile and responsive to external factors. So overall, Anaplan scenario planning empowers businesses to assess risks, identify opportunities, and optimize their strategies based on a deep understanding of how different factors and decisions interact and impact the organization's performance. It enables more robust and resilient planning, fostering better preparation for an uncertain future. So just some common examples before we get into the demo part of this webinar. There are many examples of how businesses utilize scenario planning. You can create a new scenario at any time, um, turn all your dials and levers, pull some levers, so you can compare the results of any number of different scenarios. And you can also add optimization scenarios to achieve specific business-related results. For example, in supply chain planning, you can optimize the revenue per hour of a production line by running the right mix of products while respecting forecasted demand. And this can all be optimized with, within the Anaplan program. So now without any further ado, let's let our supply chain experts show you some live demos of some of the scenarios in Anaplan or some ways that people have uh, utilized Anaplan. So I'll pass the screen share to Rod for the moment and then we come back later for uh, questions after we go through that. All right, thank you, Chris. All right, so we see here, um, as an example of scenario planning in Anaplan. So as a, as a supply planner, I will have the need to distribute the sourcing or the, of the demand 
um, you know, wh where it's picking up that demand from various uh, factories, in this case, California, Scotland, and Vietnam for my various uh, DCs. And we have a, a problem here in red that uh, it really caught the eye uh, of unfulfilled demand. So currently our last scenario was unable to solve this problem because we have uh, 11 million still unfulfilled. So what do we do? Right now we're only using 10% uh, uh, tolerance of, uh, of the sourcing. So we're going to increase that to 25%. And we're going to enable outsourcing from some of our, our vendors. OK, so then we run this button here. This will create a new scenario. Let's call it 25% um, over time and outsourcing. Okay. And then Anaplan is going to create the scenario and calculate the costs. We want to make sure that the cost and the parameters here are acceptable, because uh, obviously, you know, authorizing overtime will create additional costs per, um, per factory. But in this case, it's still acceptable, and we have managed to um, clear any unfulfilled demand. So with that, I'll... Stop right here, and uh, I'll pass it to to Michael. Rod, thank you. Yeah, I think Matt was going to do the second one. No, don't skip me, Rod. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Hello, everyone. Uh, greetings from the 16 miles of glorious New Hampshire coastline. What I'm going to talk about is something that's very common uh, for supply planners across industries. Uh, I've seen it used in CPG when you're a certain percentage of a supplier's throughput. You need to keep them uh, lights turned on volume. If you have a highly seasonal business, um, often you have to pull stuff. You have to pull in your requirements uh, to address that peak. Long time ago, way back in the 1900s, uh, I was working on something like this that was based on shifts when I was scheduling five PCA lines, and we would be pushing and pulling from one shift to another. But to set on what you're seeing on the screen right now. Right. If we look up top, if we remember from Rod's presentation, one of the factories was California. So we're looking at the California allocation. This next allocation, this next drop down here are all of the different scenarios that have been created through Rod's step. So you can see right here, here's this 25% overtime and outsourcing that was just created a couple of moments ago. For our purposes today, though, we're going to stick between baseline strict and 15% tolerance just to just to get a flavor of what comparing to is like. I have this on all periods. Um, we can select time. By hovering over this, the carrying cost is highlighted. And so this is the only place where the time is impacting the output and it's the carrying cost increase. So I want to see all periods on that. I don't want to just see it. Um, for one week or, or two weeks. As we move down, the base production capacity is here on the left, and here's the pull forward rebuild on the right. As of this moment, they're the same, but right now we can see that we've got unmet demand up here in the red um, for each for a couple of these weeks. So down here, it allows me to pre-build in a period. So I'm going to go, well, I get a little bit of room in the 31st. Let me, I'm gonna try to go as close to just in time as I can. So I want to fill all my buckets until I have no more unmet demand. And that does it there. So we've got June 26th, June 3rd, June 10th, uh, July 10th, and August 21st. Well, looks like we still need another week. So let's go back to June 19th. Now all the red is gone. And we can see that We've moved around uh, $268,000 worth of production, and we're expecting to incur increased carrying costs of almost 90,000. Not an insignificant number, but that's what the pull forwards are going to cost us. So we've got that, we've got baseline strict, say that we've solved, we've solved the supply or the output of our factory for the scenario baseline strict. 
I want to take a look at it for baseline 15 or 15% 15 tolerance, same thing. We start with these are both early. But, you know, I can look at this and I can go, well, the factory's going to run out of work next week. They're not going to have anything to do. I need to pull forward product into this week of May 29th. So I can choose to pull that in all the way to May 29th, brings it all the way up, gets rid of any of my overcapacities, and it's right there. So now I have successfully worked through two scenarios that were handed down from the sourcing team or the or the production split team to the supply planner. I've worked two, through two scenarios and I can come to this next page, production scenario comparison, and I can see all the scenarios with the numbers up top if I wanna see them flat. But if I wanna pick two to sp specifically compare, I can choose the ones that we worked, I can choose baseline strict, and I can use 15% tolerance. I have to excuse me one second, our user filters aren't set up in here. And we get this popped up and we can compare. So we know with a 15% tolerance, we've got 25 million more in revenue, uh, 8 million more in COGS, gross margin actually is slightly improved, um, and there's less unfulfilled demand, likely because we're pulling in items early and, and running less of a risk to drop below safety stock and therefore putting our fulfillment levels at risk. So now I can choose which one's the best for me. I can choose this final selection and we'll go ahead and we'll say, we can go with a 15% tolerance. And then we can approve the optimized scenario and then we can actually release the production orders and the production orders can be fed back into an ERP system. They could be sent off to a supplier. You can do whatever you want, but we've gone all the way from the point from where we're deciding which factory should build to when the factory should build. And then we're actually creating the production orders at this stage, all through the comparison of scenarios. And with that, I will hand it over to Mr. LaHood. Okay, great. That was a great um, example. Thanks, Matt. This looked really good. I know you touched a little bit on some of the stuff Mike was going to do, so we'll do a kind of a review. And Matt was just on a roll. He uh, he jumped into the <laughs> the scenario comparison, which was what I was going to also talk about. Once the the plants and the distribution centers have made all their adjustments in the the forecast and in these different versions, the next step is to move it up to the finance. Um, so as a finance as a finance analyst, I need to be able to look at these different versions and select the best version to move forward with as our final forecast. So in our production scenario comparison screen, you'll notice that we can we can review all the versions that we currently have. And as Matt showed earlier, when Rod created a new scenario, every su subsequent screen updates automatically. So the end user does not have to do anything to, to pull a new scenario in. They're always available when the finance user would go in and view the screen. So I can view all my scenarios at a very top level. I can also kind of look at my cost and my revenue. And as a financial person, projected revenue is exactly what I'm going to focus on. And that's how I'm going to choose our best scenario to move forward with. And then we also have the ability, and, and Matt has already selected these, I can view my revenue and, and COGS and profit and gross margin in a chart side by side. So when I'm looking at the top grid, let's say I select, um, I like the 15% contract. We have unfulfilled, no unfulfilled demand. And I like my 25% over time and outsourcing, but it's kind of hard to analyze them in this group. So I can move down here and select my 15% contract and my 25% over time and outsourcing. And then I can compare these side by side and I can turn off to get a more detailed view. So let's say I just want to focus on my revenue and I can look at my margin and our margin goes down because in the 25% over time and outsourcing, we have more carrying costs and we also have more uh, of the uh, contract unit costs. Now, once I have selected a final version, I would make my final selection. I would approve it and then I would release my production orders and that would set up this scenario, my 25% overtime and outsourcing for my optimization process, which would be the next 
process, next part of the process in our stream. And that's about it for comparing different versions and choosing your final scenario to move forward with. Fantastic. So we have some questions we prepared ahead of time. So if I make a lot of scenarios, can I keep them all so I can use them again in the future? Chris, do you want to answer that? Yeah, I guess I'll answer that one. Um, so yeah, so the cool thing about it is that um, you can create as many scenarios as you'd like, and you can comp you know you can uh, compare them in any way you like as well. Um, and, and you know I've, I've had clients and customers that have kept all their scenarios over time because they want to sometimes be able to go back and see what they did in a prior year during the same you know during the same time period, for example. So there's a lot of flexibility there. Gotcha. Rod, we'll go to you next. Can I share the results of my scenarios with people that do not have access to Anaplan? Absolutely. Anaplan has native export functionality. You can export to text, Excel, CSV, and even create some slides that you can share with uh, folks that don't have access to Anaplan. In Anaplan, it's super easy to make a presentation from your exports, correct? That is correct. You can also share uh, presentations that are very similar to the one we're looking at right now. Awesome. Um, so Matt, we'll take the next one. Is there a limit to how many constraints I can use when doing optimization? You could use multiple variables. The real question uh, when coming to optimization is really what are we trying to optimize? Are we trying to optimize revenue? Are we trying to opti optimize gross profit? Um, you're only going to be able to optimize for one thing, but you can have many constraints and many inputs. But the real key is getting that right question to ask the optimizer what what to optimize for your business. Hey, Michael, last but not least, how is model size impacted when you create new scenarios? Uh, model size can be impacted in a very detrimental way, uh, depending on the size of the module where those scenarios are being created each new scenario is going to expand that module size exponentially. So if the module is 100 million cells, it's going to increase 100 million cells for every new scenario created. So we want to be very careful about not creating unnecessary scenarios. And if we create a scenario that say the constraints and values that we use, we decide really don't make sense. We want to delete those instead of just leaving them in. So at the end of the day, we only want to keep the scenarios that are relevant or that we might need to look at in the future. I guess uh, an additional question, uh, kind of building on that, maybe Chris, you want to talk about it with your experience, but since this is a connected planning platform, I know we're kind of just focusing on supply chain. How does scenario planning work with like maybe connecting finance or connecting sales and marketing? Um, just kind of walk through that. Yeah, I think that's the one of the key elements that that makes you know, plan stand out against the competition is because it's a connected planning system that runs in memory. You're able to uh, interact with very you're able to set up processes that go across departments and then allow the users to interact on the same data, on the same model, and everything that they're doing as far as scenario planning is happening in real time. And so, uh, because of that, you've got a single view of the organization. And uh, and that and that goes a long way towards towards enabling, um, you know, cross-functional processes, cross interdepartmental processes, um, et cetera. And scenarios are are one of the most valuable functions within supply planning and within demand planning and within supply chain planning in general. So I think that you know really kind of highlights the value that you get when you do an Anaplan implementation. Uh, when you do a good job on, on setting up and conceiving and setting up the scenarios. Great. Any, anyone else have anything to add? I don't see any other questions in the box. No, I think I, I think that's basically it. Um, don't forget, everybody, please check out our Axelytics YouTube channel as we're adding new videos on new topics every week. And um, there's some really good ones in there already, and there's more, more to come. So uh, eager to get people's feedback. So please, uh, please take a look and let us know what you think.